Hi guys! Last week I talked about Disney live action movies and I purposefully excluded the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, I've never really talked in depth about the MCU. I'm not the biggest fan, but I do enjoy the occasional superhero flick. So today I thought it would be fun to sort MCU characters into Hogwarts houses because you know, it's the best of both worlds. It's comic books meets Harry Potter. I mean, what, what is, what's more of a nerd baby than that? This is Sorted, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you don't know how Sorted works, I just take ten random characters from any given fandom, this case being the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and sort them into Hogwarts houses because I'm a nerd. Let's do this. First we have Bruce Banner aka The Hulk. This one's a little hard because it's almost kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of situation. Bruce Banner is very different from The Hulk. If I were just doing The Hulk I would definitely say Gryffindor because Gryffindors are all about reacting on emotion and what does The Hulk do? but exude emotion and act on that. He is compelled by the emotion of anger. But Bruce Banner is much more mild, uh, a little meek, uh, more soft-spoken, more quiet, almost the exact opposite of the Hulk. I think combining them, I can definitely see the inklings of a Gryffindor in Bruce Banner. I mean, he wouldn't really have the Hulk if it wasn't really inside him, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be putting Bruce Banner slash the Hulk into Gryffindor. Next is Loki. Loki is one of the most, if not the most, famous villains in the MCU. He is one of the only reoccurring villains and you know, because it's Tom Hiddleston, he's just very enjoyable and so much fun. There is this underpinning of self-service and self-preservation in Loki. He will do anything to be to better him to better his position. And that could be betraying his brother or betraying his father, or just betraying all the Asgardians because you know, that's what Loki does. So I'm going to be putting Loki into Slytherin. Next is Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow. She's not very emotional. She doesn't really, she's not really driven by her emotions. She's not hot-headed, so she's not a Gryffindor. That only puts me, leaves me with Ravenclaw. But it makes sense. Ravenclaws are more tacticians. They think before they act, and that's really what she does. She waits and observes and doesn't act on emotion. So I'm going to be putting Natasha Romanoff aka Black Widow into Ravenclaw. Next is Steve Rogers aka Captain America. There's two houses I know he's not in, which is Slytherin and Ravenclaw, but it's kind of like a battle between Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. I think Hufflepuff because he is so loyal. He's the most loyal of the Avengers. He loves hard work. He values tradition. However, he is super brave, like most Gryffindors. But because he's so loyal, because he's so hardworking, I'm going to be putting Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, into Hufflepuff. Next is Vision. What we do know about him is that he is very curious, wants to learn, wants to observe, and he likes really watching human behavior and is inquisitive about human behavior. So therefore, I'm going to be putting Vision into Ravenclaw. Next is Stephen Strange, aka Doctor Strange. He is hot-headed. He is very prideful, so he could easily go into Gryffindor. He's a genius. He's so smart, so he could go into Ravenclaw. He's also a little selfish. In fact, he's very selfish. 
and even though he does do some self-sacrificing, he does act in his own self-interest a lot and doesn't really seem to care that much about the feelings of others. So for those reasons, I'm going to be putting Stephen Strange, aka Doctor Strange, into Slytherin. Next is Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch. She is a little difficult for me because I feel like I still don't have that much of a grasp on the Scarlet Witch. She kind of internalizes her emotions. She she doesn't really act on emotion a lot. So I think I'm gonna be putting Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch, into Ravenclaw. Next is Nick Fury. This one's actually kind of easy. Yes, he is very brave. Yes, he can be a little hot-headed. But there are more than one instances in which he displays actions that are manipulative and self-serving. So I'm going to be putting Nick Fury into Slytherin. Next is Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. He does definitely have a brave, good side to him, but he is rather selfish. He tends to think not, he doesn't tend to think of others a whole lot. I'm going to be putting Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, into Slytherin. Lastly, we have Thor. Thor is probably the easiest of these people to sort. He's hot-headed, he's completely, he completely runs on emotion, he's undeniably brave, so yeah, this is a shoe in I'm going to be putting Thor into Gryffindor. Well, there you have it, guys. Those are my take on the just 10 of the many characters of the MPU. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please let me know where you would put these characters into Hogwarts houses, and there are many, many more, so if you have any ideas or input, please put them in the comment section below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram. All those things will also be in the description, and I will see you guys next week with a brand new video. Bye!